This podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash TSE. Audible has over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Simply go to audibletrial.com forward slash TSC and tell them your boy, Mr. Donald Kelly, sent you. Want to get more appointments with executives, the top dogs, the big ones out there? You're going to love this episode. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist, and we're so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today, and we have a great guest coming on the show today, Ben Favier. Ben actually wrote a book, How to Obtain Sales Appointments with Executives. You can find it on Amazon. We'll link back to it in our show notes. Go to thesalesevangelist.com forward slash the word episode 286 the salesevangelist.com forward slash award episode 286. And this is something that's important. You know, we know that appointments, getting the first initial appointment is important. Whether you're using social selling strategies, you're using a phone, whatever you're doing in person, the first appointment is important. And Ben's going to give us some good ideas, some great ideas, a great concept that you can implement. But before we get into all of that today, I want to give some shout outs. I want to give a big shout out this week to Adam Erhart. Aaron, uh, Adam, thank you so much for connecting with me. Jay Nathan, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for connecting, brother. I wish you great success out there in the world of selling. And also to, over to the people over at PeopleDoc, thank you so much for connecting with me. And Skillshot, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for connecting. I wish you guys great success as you guys are out there offering great insights to folks on social media uh, platforms. Thank you guys for all that you're doing. And if you're listening to this podcast and you'd like to connect with me, I want to tell you, don't worry about it. It's so easy. You can find me on LinkedIn at Donald C. Kelly. You can find me on Twitter like these kind folks at Donald C. Kelly, or you can find me on Instagram, Donald C. Kelly. You can connect with our community on Facebook or LinkedIn. We have two two groups, the sales evangelizers. Some people like LinkedIn more than Facebook, but our Facebook group's been around a little bit longer, so it's a little bit bigger than our, excuse me, than our LinkedIn group. But either way, it's a great community for you to join, to be able to learn from other sellers, to build strategic alliances, and to just to get your questions answered. I'm sure your challenges are not unique. Everyone is facing some of those similar challenges. All the salespeople out there, come on, you know, check it out. And you can give us some insights. You've probably been through some of these struggles, some of these maybe newer folks that are going through or some of the senior folks are going through. You probably went through this and you know how to help. So come on, come on to the group. Check it out. The Sales Evangelizers. Search for it on Facebook, The Sales Evangelizers, and get connected with the community. Come bring your thoughts and insights. And I personally will welcome you into the group. Love to hear from you. Now, Ben is going to give us some great ideas today. I don't want to take up too much more time. He's going to give us some great insights that you can implement into your selling career and to help you to see great success. So sit back, get your Evernote, pens, paper, notepad, legal pad, any type of pad you have, and let's go ahead and dive into this episode. Welcome to the show, Ben. Hi, great to be with you. Thanks. Dude, thanks so much for coming on the show. I'm excited to have you. I love reading good books, and I love reading books that have tactics and proven principles. And recently, Ben wrote a book. It's called How to Obtain Sales Appointment with Executives. And these are proven steps to land the initial sales appointment with high-level decision makers. Ben, every seller out there listening to this want to know the secrets. So I'm excited to dive into all the fun stuff with your book. But before we do that, why don't you tell us a little bit more about you and what you do, Ben? Sure. Over the past uh, 15 years, I've been in and out of very uh, several sales positions into entry-level sales to business-to-business sales, business-to-consumer sales, most recently with enterprise software sales, where I was uh, mostly staffed to obtain a first initial sales appointment with executives to generate lead and, and demands for the account executives in the field. And uh became very, very efficient, very effective at that task. And and what I do with my book is share some of that information, some of the tools and tactics and techniques that uh, I garnered over the years of being in the field of sales and, and uh, high-level sales. Well, let's go ahead and dive into it. Why another book on sales, getting a sales appointment? Don't you think this this horse has been beaten one too many times? <laughs> that's what I uh, that's what I delved into this, and I was diving into books, uh, a lot of different authors, sales authors, and they give great advice on a lot of uh, techniques and tactics once you get the initial sales appointment. Uh, but not a lot is out there for tactics and techniques and strategies and mindset 
for that initial step of getting that first appointment with an executive, which uh, which I've seen in, being in and out of many of the offices I've been in, that's that's where it all begins and where it's least trained in the field and in these seminars you can go to is how do you get the attention of an executive and get them to give you your time over the phone or in face-to-face meetings. So that's where I just come in and, and – Put a little gravy on top of what's out there from authors like Tony Perinello, uh, Marianne Vanella, uh, Frank Romboskis, uh, Brian Carroll, some of these trainers like this. This is phenomenal stuff, and I, I like that. Uh, and I think this is a great, a great idea as well to hit up on that portion. I mean, I feel in order to be successful, do the opposite of what everyone else, everyone else is doing, and no one is having that, uh, you know, that book yet. I'm glad you were able to, you know position that. But let's, let's talk about the mistakes. What are some of the biggest mistakes people make as they're trying to set appointment? You know what I use the word trying. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's mistakes I made for years. But that's what I liked about your information and what you give out is it's it's finding that training, the right training, the right information. And then sometimes it's just a world of uh, trial and error, hard knocks, world of hard knocks, school of hard knocks. And I've done both. Uh, started out for several years just doing the School of Hard Knocks type sales where there was a sales op- job or opportunity, but there wasn't much training or any training behind it. So I think a lot of people like me uh, start out just dialing for dollars, thinking the activity <laughs> is going to win you over. The person, if you just be a, the right personality on the phone or if you just do that 100 to 150 dials, you know, you're going to hit that, you'll hit the number, which is somewhat true, but you're going to burn out. You know, mm-hmm. if you're doing those 100, 150 dials a day, going off personality alone um, and just drive and type A personality efforts, you're just, it's just not going to work. It doesn't work. I've seen it time and again. People get burned out, stop hitting their quotas, stop wanting to make the dials, and stop wanting to do the sales activity that, that gets them there. So I was in that same boat. I just started diving. There has to be a solution because I see other people making great incomes, six-figure income in sales, but I just couldn't get them to share with me my coworkers to share with me what they were doing, the ones that were winning. And so I just started reading books and attending some seminars on my own. And then I just, it led me to other avenues that I started delving into my own uh, tactics, which I give in the book. But um, a lot of it is starting off and learning what not to do, which I think is a lot of, you know, just using the personality, those cold call tactics, techniques with people, executives hate now they're they're so they're not stupid people they're savvy they get these calls all the time so they know when they're being played so to speak you know they're being manipulated and 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 they just they it turns them off right away when you read these cold call books that are you know your tactics tricks and techniques that are schemey scammy feeling you know i i I was given a book when i started one of my first enterprise sales jobs i was just like that here's the list from hoover's here's a cold call book use these words and verbiage and and good luck you know and it was (laughs) was rough (laughs) but so yeah just what i think it works well is what i my general personality overall is more of a management consultant Myers-Briggs is INTJ. So I gravitated towards the Tony Panero, Perinello mindset. Uh, being a business management consultant is how I approach sales prospecting. How I transitioned to that at first, I was just dial for dollars, be that personality guy. Hopefully they'll like you enough to give you an appointment to try to pitch them something with a demo or or, or the initial sales appointment for you the phone or over the over the web or in face face meetings. And so, but no, I transferred from being a pitchy sales pitchy guy to being a business management consultant. And that mindset switch uh, just made all the difference for me. The results just blew out, just blew it out of the out of the roof with with changing that mindset. So, what method would you want to implement if they wanted to have this business professional mindset, like a business consultant? Mm-hmm. Well, to Two schools of thought. I think Tony Parnell is pretty close to it, what he does um, with how to write sales copy. Sales copywriting and effective cold calling techniques. Two awesome authors and people and trainings I've taken uh, for learning how to do sales copy. Yeah. Start with Frank Romboskis, if you run across him and his sales material. And that led me to Tony Parinello once I got to the executive level sales and how to do sales copy. Right. Effective emails and letters you can send to people and then how i blew it out of the roof cold calling 
was Marianne Vanella. And uh, she has a book out there, 42 Rules for Cold Calling Executives. And I actually got some training from her and, and just blew it out of the, you know, generating two to four sales appointments a day with executives with her uh, techniques for strategies for cold calling executives. So it was that proper training that uh, helped get me over the over the edge. But it was a lot of things I share in my book that are unique to what I did myself that weren't just it's not just reverbage from other authors or sales trainers. It's kind of unique things, as you know, that I've learned from my my field work. Let's talk about that and some of the unique things that you have in your book. What would you say? What would, what would you like to share with listeners? Is one of the most uh, successful one that you've implemented. Obviously, we know you're not going to get a chance to do the full training, and but you know, give us a, a synopsis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say you know it's getting that right contact information is step number one for the executives you want to contact. My approach is for that hunter, not so much the farmer sales rep that uh, is looking to get into new accounts and to, or to new departments within accounts that they're not into yet. And so it starts with the right contact info. So I list about 10 to 15 different contact sources. And one I've, I list number one there is a brand new technology. It's a software that scans the entire internet, pulls back names, titles, emails, phone numbers, addresses for the people that is your target market. That I came across, and I've referred it on to several past employers, and they've all bought it. And uh, it's an awesome software. And and then the other list sources I give, either we go through IT people, or if you're going after a line of business folks, it's all there. So it's that first line of you got to know who you're going after, who you want to go after, and have their contact information to call them, to fax them, to mail them, to email them, your sales copy and your cold call script, so to speak. In the book, you talk about bullets and target. Can you emphasize that a little bit more? Tell us a little bit more about that. That's a mindset that I used. Yeah, the targets are the executives you want to land the initial sales appointment with. And then the bullets are the ammo, so to speak, that you're going to be firing in, being sales copy in your cold calls script uh, that is going to catch their attention and earn their time. So I give several sources of bullets um, in the book. That are unique out there. You can, you know, that are in line with what Tony Perinello teaches with with bullets. You know, with the sales copy elements that you want to include that are going to be universally applicable to whatever you're selling. Uh, you know, business talk line of business is they they usually pull the purse strings. So you want to talk about return on investment, total cost of ownership, uh, quick quick ROI, all that. Uh, I call it. Uh, buzzwords <laughs> so to speak that's going to catch their attention so that's that's what you need you need these unique buzzwords that are relevant to them right now so of course you can get on the um, if they're a public company get on to their executive statements online where they're talking about to the investors what they're looking to do right now one to five elements usually they're looking to improve upon right now within the business increasing revenue decreasing expenses uh, what elements you know, return on investment for the stakeholders. What's what's relevant to them right now, and how does your solution, whether it be technology or business service, apply to that? And then how to craft that and pull that all together into a sales copy letter or a cold call script that's going to resonate with them and give you time with them to pitch what you have. That is pretty cool. I like that. The there's, I mean, it's very thorough on you know just that the concept there. One of the things that came to mind right away was. Just the the thought of um, how the the gatekeeper, because at this point, set an appointment or you, you know executive assistant and so forth. How how do you get past this? Imagine I'm this new guy sitting here trying to you know get get some uh, appointments. What strategies or what recommendation would you give to someone? The biggest one, yeah, that's great. Uh, is what I learned is to work with the executive assistants. It actually kind of blew my mind once I switched over instead of just trying to get around them and trick them to give me, you know, they're going to answer the phone nine times out of 10 if they're a big enough executive that, uh, how to work with them. Cause nine times out of 10, they're getting somebody that's trying to get around them as a sales sales rep. And so I just started working with them. And, uh, a lot of times I would just say, Hey, here's what I can do. I was like, I would pitch them. Like I'm pitching the executive, respect them. Like they are that executive and nine times out of 10, they know as, just about as much of what's going on in the organization within that area that they're an executive assistant for 
than the executive knows. And sometimes they can even give you an appointment without even having to talk to the executive. You can get scheduled onto the executive's calendar just by pitching them and talking to them. So I, what I would do is a lot of times I would contact the executive assistant, quick, quick pitch about what I'm about, and then just ask, hey, can I – let's make it you know, not direct. Hey, can I just email you or fax you what I'm talking about, a one-page one document about – what I have and what I could do for you and your executive. That works a lot of times. I say, here, here's a quick pitch. Hey, can I get 15 to 30 minutes on the executive's calendar? That works. That works sometimes. So, but yeah, I think giving that peer to peer, another element is, is a peer to peer uh, com- conversation with the executive assistant. It's like to come across like a sales representative. Sometimes you can even call in as my role was as the appointment setter when I first called in a high-level sales, hey, I'm the executive assistant to XYZ account executive here at X company. I was just calling because X, my account executive, would like to get time on the calendar with your executive. And here's what we've done for other companies and why we would like to meet with your executive. Does that sound like a good idea? Mm. It sounds a lot more collaborative than it than you know, like you, get, you said at the beginning, trying to trick them or trying to get around them because there's probably nothing new under the sun with them. They've probably heard every single trick in a book. Trick, yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. that's yeah, it's just more the direct approach. Direct approach, right? I'm I'm a straightforward direct guy, and it was very uneasy for me to try to do the pitchy, schemey, scammy stuff. So I just gravitated towards let's just be direct. Here's what I can do for you. Uh, and here's what we can do for you, or here's what we've done for others. That sounds like something you'd want to dive into to see if we could do for you. Mm, love it. If there was, like, let's talk about emailing now because you have a whole another you know world now with uh, you know tech, and you, some sellers are just like they're I don't know I think they're just allergic to the phone or something, but <laughs> <laughs> they do a lot with emails. What any email strategy that you would recommend with getting appointments with executives? I think the tagline is everything, the open rate to get the subject line just right. I think it, you're, you're direct into the point right there and very, very brief into the body of the letter. So I think, you know, subject line return investment of 660% within X amount of months. Uh, and then quickly state like increased revenue dollar amount wise for XYZ company, which would be relevant to them, whatever company's relevant to them that you've done something for mm-hmm. or what if you haven't done anything yet, if you're new what could you do here's the potential of the ROI in the subject line but then in the body of the letter I think it's brief just a quick bio about you your company and then bullet points is what they're going to read first anyway nine times out of ten so then that's where you really nail down what you can do briefly and quickly business result wise for them how are you going to so someone that's like VP of finance is going to be a lot different than somebody's VP of supply chain and those bullet points if, you, if you're selling to both those people. So it's, it's gravitating towards their line of business title and then also towards their industry. So those two combinations usually work pretty well for me when I talk to both. Okay, what's this industry key to that's different than other industries? What's their verbiage and things they need to hear from me? that I know what I'm talking about when I'm talking to them. And then on top of that, their job title specific elements that they're responsible for. What are they held accountable to uh, for their job and their, and their, their pay? And then how can I help them at their job better? Mm, I like that. And I think what comes to mind, I think of it like the bullets, like you mentioned earlier in, in a sense as well. Um, you know, just being able to truly understand their business and understand some of those things that's going to be meaningful to them. Mm-hmm. Here's a, one other thing that I want to get kind of, it just perked and jumped on my mind. You mentioned in a book about faxes. Are you meaning like a physical fax? Absolutely. Yeah, you have to be careful with that now. Um, since, since lately, which I do with my, in my book, that it's not a, exactly allowed anymore, uh, marketing faxes. So it can be, if you're going to, if you also say, if you call the executive assistant and you get permission to fax them, that's a great way to do it. Now, fax blasting, that's been somewhat disallowed in most areas around the, around the world now. Um, but that was a great way when I first wrote the book that uh, you could get, contact people directly and just blast out an email. But now the other al- alternative is you can fax executives and executive assistants when they won't give you an email. 
it's a lot of times you have the sales copy letter that's just awesome. You know it's going to resonate with them. The assistant and assistant going like, oh, yeah, i got to get this to my executive. He's going to want a meeting. Or if you get the executive on the line, like, oh, yeah, yeah, send me something. But they're not going to give you an email address because uh-huh. they know I'm going to keep getting hammered by your email, so I don't want that. So they would say, well, can I just fax you something then? And then you can have a, a fax software service where you're just on your laptop and or you can go to a physical fax machine. But it's a lot more efficient through the software programs I, I show you on the, in the book. Uh, be able to fax out right from your from your computer. Yeah, make it very very easy. And I've seen plenty of those um, where you just you know put it connects to your CRM and, and so forth into your marketing material. So very interesting, man. I, I right. you know because it's again this idea of being different is a way I can stand out and to you know make my differentiate my business and my concepts that I'm that I'm offering. Yeah, now, there was there was a couple there. Just in kind of, yeah, I was able to get a couple of CIO appointments and the COO appointments. I couldn't reach them or get around their executive assistant or resonate with their assistant or them to get anywhere. But I got, I did get them to give me a fax number, and then I had my sales letter that landed the appointment with uh, with those people. Money. Could you tell us any success stories? I know you kind of shared a little bit there, but any success stories of how maybe the first time you did all did this and just like everything resonated well and. Um, you got a successful appointment, went to a great deal, so forth. Yeah, one. This was that's what uh, you talk about. It's trial and error. So I read these things. Like I first started in the world of sales, business to business sales, going door to door with some businesses, and then cold calling without training. Really, it was a lot of this. Go to this weekly training when you first start, and they basically tell you, you know, activities. Uh, here's your quota. So here's how many dials you have to make based to get to that quota. How many people will close? Twenty percent. This kind of scenario. That's that kind of scenario, right? So it was all activity based, and then I just got in there and started pounding the phones, got a few appointments, and then just it was just tanked. So that process didn't work for me. The traditional Fortune 500 company sales training just tanked for me, I, and I just lost that job. But I didn't give up on sales. So I then came across another business sales uh, position. And I found Frank Rombosk's material that came – he went through the same school I did where he went through this training and then somebody finally showed him, hey, actually, it's about attracting people instead of for trying to force your way in. And then he, in his material, Frank talks about sales copywriting. So I delved into that and delved into Tony Paranello's information once I got to enterprise software sales. And it talked about how to write a sales letter. And so that was my first caveat was how do I – Let's give this a shot. I'm going to email this to somebody uh, this this way and see what happens. It was brand new to me versus just pounding the phone, trying to break through the doors of the assistants, the the direct the opera phone operators and the executives and pitching that executive so coolly that <laughs> he's just going to be like, this guy's cool, man. I want to meet with him. <laughs> so I, I got off that old school mindset and got into this let's attract people mindset, which – Marianne Bunnell is very good at on the phone, and, and Frank Robosco, Tony Pernell, and some information I give in the book helped me put me over the edge. And it was uh, that first enterprise software sales job. I started emailing people, and I was 150% of quota in my first quarter of getting appointments. Wow. And then it went on to, went on beyond that. And I actually you know, was able to get CEO appointments, CIO, CFO, VP, director. And um, yeah, I, I would say the last – I got good enough to where at the end with – with uh, Mary Ann Vanilla's material, even cold calling and adding to the sales copywriting, I, I cold called a two billion dollar annual revenue company executive, got him on the phone, did the cold call approach, some elements I give in the book, and then also talk about what Mary Ann Vanilla did that Thursday. Another sales got an appointment that Tuesday. That Thursday, the account executive had an appointment with that with that contact and. Is I got an email right away from that account executive. Hey, uh, that that was a that lead was right on target. We're actually going to implementation in two to four weeks. No, way. <laughs> that's no awesome, joke. dude. No joke. I went from being fired because I was get, couldn't make an appointment for the life of me. My initial business to business sales jobs when I first started taught the old school way, which I think a lot of people still are. And but uh, if you're, people that are on your podcast or, or on your information or. Like me and you, we're looking for better ways to do it. We didn't want to give up on our dream of that good income and lifestyle that sales can give you. But uh, yeah, where I'm at now is I'm able to start my own business. I've within the past two years, I've been able to obtain over 300 business accounts from everything I've learned over the past 10, 15 years, and a lot of it's in, I give in this book 
about how to uh, generate the initial sales opportunities, which is really the majority of business and sales is getting that initial opportunity up and running. Once you're in front of them and you have what you have, but you know it's good, it's it's easy going. But it's that initial, how do I get them to talk to me? Dude. No, it, it, that is, it is so point on, man, and, and so true. And what I love about the book, again, it's the idea of having difference and you know having something unique. And uh, I wish we could probably go and chat for the rest of the day, but I know you got other things you got to take care of. Uh, and, but if well, there's one major takeaway you'd like listeners to walk away with, one piece of advice um, that they can just say, man, I learned about Ben, learned this from him, I'm going to implement it, and I'm going to stay connected with him. What's that one piece of advice? Keep reading, get mentors. Don't just put your nose to the grindstone and keep dialing for dollars without knowing what you're saying or doing. Uh, get that mentor, get that training, and keep reading, keep studying, keep going to seminars, and you'll get there. Boom, boom. Love it, man. If uh, folks out there want to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to connect? Sure, on LinkedIn, uh, Ben Favier on LinkedIn, and then also through Amazon.com with my book, How to Obtain Sales Appointments with Executives. Sweet. Well, we'll put that stuff in our show notes so that if the listeners want to get back to it, they want to get connected with you, they can go ahead and and do so. And we'll also have a link to your book in our show notes as well. Ben, this has been phenomenal. It's been great information. I always like to hear about people's success. And uh, even I'm pumped up right now, dude. So thanks a lot, man. (laughs) You're welcome. Some goodness, baby. Goodness. <laughs> you can get connected with Ben and learn more about the goodness that he shared today by going to the salesevangelist.com forward slash the word episode and then the number 286, the salesevangelist.com forward slash the word episode and the number 286. It's a great opportunity for you to learn more about Ben, to get connected with his books and to, to see how you can take some of the things that he's sharing out there and implement them into your selling career to set some more appointments and to close some more deals eventually. Again, we share these folks because we share these these things from these folks because we want you to be successful. I mean, it's just it's what our our business is all about, helping people to create the lifestyle that they deserve. And we want to help you in any way we can. And one of the ways that I want to help you, I love Audible and I talk about them all the time, but I want you to take advantage of it. You can go to audibletrial.com forward slash TSC, Audible Trial dot com forward slash TSC and get a free sales book. There are a lot of sales books out there. You can check out The Ultimate Selling Machine by Chet Holmes, the late Chet Holmes. Fabulous book. Give you some great strategies, some great insights. The things, you can tweak them according to your industry, according to your business, and according to the time frame. Some of those things that can be updated according to some of the social media platforms that we have. But the principles, I'm telling you, the strategies are fabulous. Check it out. Just go to audibletrial.com forward slash TSC to get copy of your free uh, free sales book and to get a 30-day free trial. Again, all in all, we want you to be successful, want you to be happy, but most importantly, I want you to go out and do big things. <laughs>